Recording. Throne bowl demo. Okay, we're going to make a bowl today, and the kind we're going to make is a throne bowl. There's basically what I consider or classify two different ways of throwing uh, a bowl form, which is basically just a, a, a shape that's a big volume. Uh, the first is a thrown one. It has advantages and disadvantages. And then we have a stretch bowl, which has advantages and disadvantages. We're going to do the easiest one first, and that's what we call a thrown bowl. So we're just going to throw our clay on here. We're going to come in here, make sure that we center it. Get that clay nice and centered. We'll bring it up into the cone. I like to work it two or three extra times um, to make sure that I have gotten all the bubbles out of it. In the wedging process, which we do earlier, we get acclimated to the clay. We make sure that we get in good shape. Now, the reason that we do thrown bowls, and, and when I say that they're the, the easiest to do, is because that's basically what we're doing. The wheel is throwing them for us, pretty much. We have a little bit of control of it, and we always want to do that. But it's a fairly in interesting way of doing it, because what we're doing is we're going, basically, the idea of a cylinder but we're really kind of falling away from that concept of trying to lift the clay up. We're just going to try to bring it out and up is the ideas that we're going to try to do with it. The nice thing about thrown bowls is they're fairly easy to do. Anybody can do it if, as long as you can keep it somewhat centered or maybe even not real centered. You can throw a bowl, okay? Fairly simple. The bad side or the downside of this is that quite often thrown bowls can't be very tall. So it really doesn't press your limits real well. Okay, but at least we get a project kind of put together. So we've got there, we're going to come in here. It's no different really than what we've done in the past. We're going to come in here and do our center hole, just like that, until we're about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. You can check that with your, with your needle tool. We'll pick it out, we'll stop the wheel, and we slide it down like this, and we slide our finger down until we touch the clay hold it there and we see that we're about a quarter of an inch. That's, that's a good enough amount of clay to leave on the bottom. Okay, we're going to turn it back up to speed. Now, instead when we were making our cylinder, I asked you to scoop all the way across there and then lift up the sides. What I'm going to ask you to do now is really we're going to come in with our right hand and we're going to bring it in like this and we're going to as we start to scoop that clay, we're going to come up and develop an arc, just like this. Really nice, supple arc here. Kind of like a parabolic curve. Okay, so we're going to pinch in. Notice the clay is already starting to come up a little bit. And we're going to slowly bring it out, just like that. Okay, we get a little friction. That's our first little pull here. One of the things, I guess the disadvantages of a thrown bowl is it's going to be thicker because we've got a lot of weight here and it's, it has to work off that curve and just stay right there. So we're going to have to trim it a lot more. And we'll show you how to trim later on. Okay. We're going to come in here at the bottom. We're going to pinch in. Notice, see I'm pinching in. I'm bringing my fingers in. And if I feel some friction, I'll go back to that spot. Now I want to keep that same curve and we're just going to really be, we're not going to worry about what the outside of this clay looks like right now. We're going to trim it down thinner, okay, so that it'll be a nice light bowl. We're going to be really concerned about the interior of this, okay. We want a nice, supple curve that works. If we get a flat spot, it's going to collapse out or in on us, one or the other. It's just going to happen. When that does, we get to wedge it up, start it over again. Usually you can use a piece of clay three or four times until it gets too moist. I'm going to pinch in a little more, and I'm just going to work and make sure that I have a nice, steady curve all the way up here, just like that. Come in here, fix that lift just a little bit. Next thing we want to do is we want to come in here and just go ahead and clean out any moisture that may be in here. Be sure not to press down too hard. If you do, it'll collapse on you. And then I will also, sometimes I'll just put a little decoration on the inside. I clean off my hands for a second, and I just take my finger, I put it right in the middle, and I make a little spiral in the bottom of it. It just looks nicer. It gives the idea that it's handmade, not machine-made.
made, even though it's made by a machine, but it's also made by hand also. Okay. The last thing we're going to do, you're going to have to cut this loose off the bat. Get your wire. Make sure that you're about the distance here. Don't cut off the front. Sometimes that happens when you're measuring. We're going to pull real taut. Spin it through there nice and light like that. And cut through. We're done there. All we need to do is pop the bat off. Always back yourself up here, push in, it's a control push in, and then just nice, lightly comes off. If you just push in like this and don't do this, uh, usually the bat goes this way and you catch the bowl here and it's a little bit out of round. 